video explains the proper procedure to identify and then repair a carrier to housing leak on Spicer's DNR 404 family of tandem drive axles. First, it's important to recognize the difference between a leak and a weeping condition. A weeping joint is characterized by these conditions, dampness, discoloration, and no dripping oil. The discoloration or stain is actually caused by a few droplets of lubricant escaping through either one of the fastener holes or through the flange when the housing flexes under an extreme loading condition. The actual volume of lubricant that is lost is very small and does not represent a threat to the integrity of the axle. A leaking joint is wet with a greasy buildup and is actually dripping oil from the joint. Refer to Information Bulletin ABIB0203 for additional details regarding weep and leak diagnoses and repair recommendations. You must properly diagnose the condition before proceeding. It's important that you observe all of the normal safety procedures, including wearing proper protection for every step in this procedure. Before getting started, it's important that the adapter plate is properly secured and positioned on the transmission jack. Block the tires on the vehicle. You may want to remove the grate or catwalk over the forward rear axle. Next, disconnect the drive line. Now, drain the lubricant into a clean pan. We'll refill the axle with the same lubricant. Remove the axle shafts, nuts, and washers, and then remove the shaft. Repeat this procedure on the other side of the vehicle. Then remove all but one of the old carrier fasteners. Leave one cap screw in place to hold the carrier until the transmission jack and adapter plate are moved in place and secured. Because of their position, three of the cap screws on the top require a special adapter to break the fasteners loose. Now we're ready to remove the carrier using a transmission jack and adapter plate. There are two carrier adapter plates, the forward rear and the rear rear. For demonstration purposes in this video, we'll only be repairing the forward rear axle. When performing this repair on a rear rear carrier, the pinion bearing cage cap screws will need to be removed and replaced with longer cap screws. It will be necessary to use two M14 by 2.0 by 60 millimeter grade 10.9 cap screws to mount the adapter. A quantity of these cap screws are included in the adapter plate kit, PN511897. Refer to Dana Spicer Information Bulletin ABIB0202 for specifics about the removal of this carrier. To begin the forward rear carrier removal, disconnect the IAD shift cylinder airline. Install carrier guide pins at the 930 and the 4 o'clock positions of the housing mounting holes. Remove two power divider cap screws. These are at the 5.30 and 7 o'clock positions. Move the adapter plate into the proper position. Some vehicles may set lower than others. If the adapter plate will not line up, it may be necessary to jack up the truck and put it on stands. Align the plate holes by adjusting the transmission jack table on the mounting plate. Then reinstall the two PDU cover to carrier cap screws that were removed and tighten them with an impact gun. Now remove the last carrier to housing cap screw. Use a large screwdriver or pry bar to back the carrier off the housing studs and pull the carrier. Proper cleaning of the carrier flange and housing surfaces is very important for a proper repair. Use a wire wheel to remove any paint, old sealant, or oil from the housing and carrier mounting surfaces. Then, use brake cleaner or its equivalent to remove any residual oil or dirt. Check the axle housing for any cracks, nicks, or burrs on the surfaces. The only reason to replace a stud is if it came out with the nut when it was being disassembled. Now, Apply a 1 8 inch bead of Loctite 5699 Ultra Gray or Dow Corning 30100 automotive sealant to the housing surface. 
It's important to make a loop and apply the sealant around all the holes and studs. Once it's applied, do not spread or smooth out the sealant. Tampering with the sealant at this point could cause a bad repair. We're now ready to reinstall the carrier assembly. This is very important. The carrier will move slightly forward when it is removed from the housing, and the transmission jack table must be adjusted to compensate for this movement. Adjust the jack to start the carrier on the alignment studs. Push the carrier in so that it just makes contact with the housing studs. It's important that the carrier is at the same angle as the housing. Make sure that the carrier flange is just touching each of the studs. Again, the gap between the carrier flange and the housing ring should be even all the way around. Rotate the input shaft to align the output side gear splines to the output shaft. Raise or lower the assembly until it slides into place. If it does not slide easily, check the carrier to housing alignment, right to left, top to bottom. Before removing the adapter plate or the alignment studs, Install at least one new carrier fastener to hold the carrier in place. Disconnect the carrier adapter plate from the PDU cover and remove the alignment studs. Apply Loctite 277 to the threads of the original cap screws, then reinstall and torque to 114 to 140 foot-pounds. Install the remaining carrier fasteners and washers supplied with the kit. Remember, the top three fasteners must be torqued using the special adapter and a torque wrench. For all the others, tighten them with an impact gun in a crisscross pattern. Most half-inch drive impact guns have a maximum torque of 250 to 300 foot-pounds. After all the fasteners are tight, verify one cap screw with a calibrated torque wrench. Also, remember that if you use a socket with a swivel or an extension, you'll get less torque out of the impact gun. These fasteners should be checked with a torque wrench. Reconnect the IAD shift cylinder airline. Reinstall the drive line. Remove the old gasket material from the axle shaft flange and the wheel hub surfaces. Clean the axle shaft flanges and the wheel hub surfaces with brake cleaner or its equivalent. Install a new axle shaft gasket. Reinstall the axle shafts. Install the washers and nuts and torque to the proper specifications. Finally, install the housing drain plug. Remove the fill plug from the housing cover and refill the axle housing with the same lubricant that was removed. Add additional lubricant if needed until it is level with the bottom of the fill hole. The repair to the carrier to housing leak is now complete. As we explained earlier, a weeping joint does not represent a significant risk to the integrity of the axle. However, if for example a customer insists that a weeping axle is repaired, the following procedure has proven to be very effective in stopping a weep. Safety is very important. Always follow proper standard safety procedures and use the necessary safety equipment when required. Block the tires on the vehicle. Back out every other carrier to housing fastener or not two or three full turns. Now, one fastener at a time, apply a few drops of Loctite 290 behind the bolt head or nut. If flat washers are used under the fastener or nut, the Loctite must be applied to both sides of the washer. Now, tighten the fasteners with an impact gun. Then use a calibrated torque wrench to verify that the impact gun is putting out a minimum of 250 foot-pounds. This is important. After applying the Loctite 290, the fastener must be tightened within three minutes. On the forward axle, you'll need to use the special adapter to torque the top three carrier to housing fasteners. Now, go back and loosen the fasteners not done in the first step and repeat the procedure on every other one so that all fasteners have been treated with the Loctite. The weep repair is now completed. If you have any questions, refer to the printed information bulletin or call the Road Ranger call center.
at 1-800-826-4357.